Before we start to introduce the stories that we are going to read this semester, I think some of the uh, definitions are needed. Okay, so what is Taiwan fiction? Of course, uh, it's very simple. It's a uh, fiction, works of fiction written by Taiwanese writers. Of course, this is a uh, this is a no-brainer, right? Okay, and uh, but something that. Uh, I think if you are a student of literature or you have taken uh, literature courses, you have, I think you have a vague idea of the development of uh, uh, literature in the West, uh, in a general framework. That is the, uh, from 18th century to the earliest part of uh, 19th century, we have uh, Romanticism in, uh, in, in the West. And the later on, around, uh, uh, around uh, 1850, we have a realism, and later on we have naturalism and uh, modernism and uh, postmodernism in the West, right? Okay, this is uh, this is a very general framework of the de development of uh, uh, literature in the West, and uh, I what I what I'm going to do to say is that this is different from Taiwan. Okay, first one, the first one, romanticism. Uh, some of the very important romanticist, uh, romanticist and, uh, novelist, uh, for example, in British uh, literature, uh, la, 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 the author of uh, Frankenstein, uh, Mary Shelley, right? Or Sir Walter Scott. They are very important uh, writers of uh, romanticism. And uh, the tenet or the spirit of uh, Romanticism is against the nation nationality. Nationality is a very important value and the tradition set up by Enlightenment, right? That, that is a, a very important uh, philosophical movement uh, uh, in, in 17, uh, the 17th century. And uh, Romanticism also emphasized the connections between man and nature. But this is something very important. So, uh, usually, we see the novel, novels of romanticism has a tendency to uh, to criticize uh, the development of uh, uh, the industrial revolution and uh, the development of uh, commercialism or capitalism. And uh, the second phase of this development is the uh, realism. Of course, uh, I think you you must know some of the very uh, important novelists from realism. For example, Charles Dickens. What, what did Charles Dickens do before he became a uh, novelist? I, 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 I think uh, this is very important to uh, understand realism. Before Charles Dickens became a very important British novelist of realism, he was a journalist and he reported cases for British pe people, the cases in the court, court of law, right? Okay, so. Uh, what Charles Dickens did at that time basically is to uh, discover social problems, to criticize social problems. Okay, so realism, uh, the, the, the uh, superficial meaning of realism is to write realistically, right? To write in the real sense, to write uh, as real as possible. But there's also a, a sense which is deeper than this superficial sense. That is, uh, you have to write it uh, with a critical spirit. You have to criticize the society. Especially, you have to criticize the society in the urban world. That is, uh, for example, uh, Charles Dickens, he, he wrote many novels uh, criticizing uh, the, the urban world of London. Uh, for example, uh, David, David Copperfield, uh, Don't Be In Some, and the Bleak House, They're, they all criticize the, the, uh, the development of a com commercialism and uh, capitalism in London. Okay, so this is a social political criticism of the urban world. Okay? And uh, uh, after realism, we have uh, somehow similar 
But uh, different uh, phase of uh, development in literature, that is naturalism. Naturalism, uh, it originated from France, France not from uh, Britain. It's uh, because we, we know that Emile Zola, is, he's a great master of uh, naturalism in France. In France. And uh, the spirit of naturalism is put modern men in experiments in order to show their fate. And uh, these modern men, they usually live in a big city. For example, Emil Zola, he, he wrote about the characters living in Paris. Okay? And uh, for example, in, in Britain, George Moore, George Moore, he wrote about the citizens uh, living in London, right? Okay, so this is a, a very important spirit. And uh, the second part of this is uh, experiments. That is, this, is, uh, this is an idea founded by Zola, because Zola thought that uh, uh, literary, uh, literary creation should be like a scientific experiment. So the, the way he do this kind of a creation is to put all his characters into uh, the urban world, and the urban world is the setting for this kind of a scientific and a literary experiment. Okay? And uh, he put these people in this setting and uh, see what their, uh, what their fate is. Okay. So this is, uh, for example, you, you, you see uh, there are representative works of Zola. Uh, for example, Nana, in, this, in, the, in, uh, in the novel we see the finally the female protagonist became a prostitute in the novel, right? Okay. And uh, the, third, uh, the fourth phase is uh, modernism. Marxism tried to represent the urban world through the impressions and the consciousness of the characters. The, I think this, uh, this the, act, the, the example by excellence for this uh, modernism, this kind of modernism is uh, James Joyce, right? James Joyce wrote a, a very important uh, novel that is Ulysses, and uh, another one is a uh, story collection, Dubliners, right? What he wrote is basically about the people living in Dublin. And uh, in his hand, Dublin is portrayed as a very, uh, very dark and a very miserable city. And uh, this is uh, from his own perspective. He writes the city from his own perspective. He writes the city from the, because we, we see the character, the, the main characters of, uh, of James, of uh, James Joyce is uh, usually very young, very young pe uh, people, and uh, they they are very vulnerable, and uh, they are very emotional and sentimental. So it's not like uh, uh, if you are if, if your character is are uh, old man, old people, or child. They are uh, uh, it's very different. Okay, and the last phase, maybe we, we can talk about the uh, the death of fiction itself, but that's not our topic in this semester. So we, I'm going to. Uh, just uh, talk a, a little bit about postmodernism. Postmodernism stress the death of author, truth, and God. And I think this is a very uh, interesting thing in Taiwan because later on we are going to introduce the f uh, fiction written by uh, Huang Fan and Zhang Da Chun. They are they are this kind of uh, they they uh, they combine postmodernism and urban fiction very perfectly. Okay, so this is uh, what we're going to see. Uh, later on, okay. So this is the uh, development of uh, the literature in the West, and in Taiwan we have this uh, a somehow different uh, <coughs> development. The first phase is Romanticism in the 19, 1950s. Okay, so I'm talking about the post-war development of Taiwan fiction. The first, the first part of this development is uh, Romanticism, and uh, we have two different versions of. Uh, Romanticism. One is the first one is uh, anti-communism because you know uh, after 1949, uh, KMT government was defeated by the Communist Party, the troops, the troops of the Communist Party. So more than one million people relocated to Taiwan with the KMT government, right? And uh, these people. In, among these people, there are many writers because uh, because they because among the one more than one million people, there are many teachers and students. And uh, after they went to Taiwan, they became writers, right? And uh, 
what they want to do is to write about their uh, their uh, personal encounter in mainland China. They try to memorize. They try to remember the past in the mainland China. So we write anti-communism uh, writings. This is uh, one version of romanticism. And uh, the other version of romanticism in Taiwan fiction is uh, lyrical, lyrical romanticism. Because at that time, many, uh, we, we know that from, uh, during the period between 1949 and 19, 1987, many people, many mainlanders in Taiwan, they, cannot, they could not go back to mainland China because there is a martial law against this. And there's also uh, the situation of the uh, communist ruling in mainland China did not allow this, right? So they miss their homeland very much. So they use this kind of nostalgic writing to remember their homeland in mainland China. This is a two version. So basically, the representative works, uh, writer uh, in this period is, uh, I, I can say that this is Lin Haiying, because Lin Haiying, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how Lin Hai in portrayed Beijing or Peking in, uh, in, in, in her novel. Okay. And uh, in the second phase of uh, post-war fiction development is the modernism. This is somehow uh, different in the development, uh, fr from the development of the West because in, in the West we have uh, realism first and later on we have modernism. But in Taiwan we have Modernism first, first and uh, this modernism is borrowed from the West. So uh, at that time, this writer we see here, Bai Xinyong, he, he uh, established uh, a literary mag magazine called Xian Dai Wenxue, that's modern literature. And uh, this literary journal tried to introduce many modernist writers in the West to Taiwan. For example, there's a poet, uh, T.S. Eliot, and uh, they try to translate the, the works written by uh, T.S. Eliot. That is, uh, may, maybe you have heard that, uh, the Westland, right? This, uh, this is a very uh, important work written about London. And uh, for example, other modernist work, uh, writers, for, uh, Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway, and uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and uh, James Joyce, such as, uh, such, such as that. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, this kind of uh, modernism transplanted from the West in Taiwan. And uh, the third phase is uh, nativist realism and naturalism in the 1970s. Because in Taiwan, it's hard to distinguish nativist realism from naturalism. Because nativist realism, in nativist realism, or in, na in realism in the West, the, uh, the, the outcome, the ending of the novel Usually, is for example, if you have, you you are a reader of uh, Charles Dickens, you can know. For example, David Copperfield, the main character, he became a very uh, rich law, uh, lawyer, attorney in the end, right? But what naturalism write about is the miserable endings of his, of its uh, main characters. Uh, uh, like I said, for example. Uh, uh, there's a French novelist, uh, Madame Bo uh, uh, Flaubert. He, he wrote uh, Madame Bovary, right? And uh, Madame Bovary uh, is, is dead in the end of the novel, right? Okay. So in, in, this, uh, in this phase of uh, development in post-war Taiwan fiction, we can see the combination of uh, nativist realism and uh, naturalism. On the one hand, these writers, for, uh, such as uh, Chen Yingzhen, Huang Chunming and uh, Yang Jingzhu, they criticized the urban war in Taiwan, especially the, uh, uh, the, the life in Taipei, because uh, they wrote about many uh, people from the southern part or from the eastern part of Taiwan. They went to Taipei, okay? So this, uh, and then they went to Taipei and they have to face many oppressions from the urban war. And uh, in the end of their stories, many of their characters died or many of the characters have to endure this kind of uh, social oppression. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the third phase of uh, development in uh, post-war Taiwan fiction. And uh, the fifth uh, development of uh, post-war Taiwan fiction is 
the combination of urban fiction and uh, postmodernism is uh, in the 1980s. We, we see two very important writers, Zhang Dachun and uh, Huang Fan. Okay? So if you want to have, uh, want to have a big picture, want to see the big picture of uh, the, the development of uh, the post-war time fiction, you can, uh, you can read the following uh, books. Uh, from book one to three, uh, first one is Chinese literature in the second half of modern century. And the second is uh, Chinese fiction from Taiwan. And uh, the third is writing Taiwan, a new literary history. These three books are collections of, uh, is anthology of uh, essays. And the essays written by uh, many uh, important scholars and really discuss the uh, many of the writers we are going to read uh, this week, uh, this semester. And the fourth one is uh, modernism and uh, the nativist resistance. In Taiwan, in, in the there's uh, something very important in the de development of post-war Taiwan fiction. That is the antagonism of uh, uh, the antagonism be between modernism and uh, nativist realism. We are going to in introduce this uh, this later. And this is uh, uh, written by. A uh, very important uh, scholar, uh, Zhang Songshen. Uh, he's a he's a Taiwanese scholar in, in, in America. And uh, if you want to uh, you want you want to read what the writers had to say about themselves, you can see this uh, anthology. This is uh, an anthology edited by one German uh, scholar and uh, another is a, a scholar from America. That is a modern Chinese writer's self portraits You can see uh, autobiographical essays written by the writers. Okay, and if you want to know a little bit about the works uh, written by uh, these uh, Taiwan fiction writers, you can check this online course. And this is this is a, a lecture pro provided by me last year. Uh, you can check this online. You can you can see I I try to introduce this 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 course is an introduction to post-war Taiwan fiction. I I try to introduce the historical framework of Taiwan fiction, and I try to introduce many uh, as many uh, writers as possible. And if you are especially interested in urban fiction, please check the uh, unit ten from unit uh, unit eleven to unit. 13, okay? In units 11, there's uh, three female writers of the late uh, 70s and early 80s. Uh, because we know, the, we know that the, the urban development in Taiwan started from maybe from, uh, from 1970s, okay? And uh, it prospers in uh, 1980s, okay? So this is, uh, at that time, many, many of the female writers became very famous. For, for example, writers like Li Ang, Writers like uh, Xiao Sa and uh, writers like Yuan Chong Chong. And uh, we're going to introduce Li Ang and Xiao Sa this semester. And uh, there's also Lost in the Big City, stories by Zhang Da Chun and Huang Fan. Uh, they, are all, they are also uh, included in this semester. And the third, uh, Unit 13 is uh, the Zhu Sisters. Uh, that is the, the writers uh, Zhu Tianwen and Zhu Tianxin. They are, they are sisters. And, uh, uh, they, they try to write a lot about uh, urban fiction. And uh, the second definition is also very important. That is, the, what is urban experience? I, I don't know uh, whether you have a chance to live in a big city like Taipei or not. If you don't have this kind of uh, experience, I think you can uh, think, you can, uh, you can think this question by now, what, uh, what is urban experience? What is, it, uh, what is it different from the living, the life in the country? Okay, so this is a, a very, important, uh, very important question that you have to ask yourself. But for myself, if you have read the course dis discussion, you know that I, I always use a, a, a structural approach to analyze uh, urban fiction in Taiwan. That is, you have to establish a framework of analysis. You have to uh, divide the city into different parts. 
And uh, it's not just about the city itself. You have to divide it, the city. You have to divide the city into uh, several parts or two parts, and uh, you have to examine the relationship between the parts. And you also have to consider the relationship between the city itself and uh, its surrounding suburban world and uh, other cities. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, something you have to think about. One example that uh, you have to, uh, that, uh, is which is very famous in Taiwan, is the, the similarity between London and Taipei. Uh, we have uh, uh, 12, I think it's 12, 12 districts in Taipei. Uh, that is uh, Beitou, from, from north to south is Beitou, Shilin, uh, Neihu, Zhongshan, Datong, Songshan, Wanhua, Da'an, Xinyi, Nangang, Zhongzhen. Wenshan. Do you, do you have any idea about our location? Where where are we right now? Da. Yeah, da. In which part of Da'an? North or south? North or south of Da'an? Do you know that? It's we are we are uh, located at this part. Maybe this part is uh, at the in the in uh, is a uh, at this uh, intersection between. Da'an and the Wenshan, because you know that you go along, along Roosevelt Road, you are going to go to uh, Wenshan uh, district, right? Okay. So basically, if uh, if you chose to if you choose to read uh, Crystal Boys written by Bai Xianyong, you are going to have a very uh, very clear idea of this kind of a div, uh, distinction. That is the distinction between West District and the East District. In, Taip in Taipei, we talk about the distinction between West District and the East District. We, we rarely talk about the, district between, uh, the, the, the distinction between North Taipei and the Southern Taip South Taipei. We talk about the, the dis distinction between West District and the East District. And the West District includes uh, Wanhua, Zhongzhen, Datong, and a part of uh, uh, Zhongshan, Zhongshan District. And this is the oldest part of Taipei because the earliest de development of Taipei took two place at this this location, and uh, East Street is constituted by Da'an, Xinyi, Songshan, and the part of Zhongshan. So basically, West Street and the East Street is divided by Zhongshan North Road. I, I think you 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 have to know that because if you you walk on any road. Uh, which is uh, goes from from uh, east to west. Uh, you cross Zhongshan North Road, you are going to another part of this city, right? Okay, so you, you if you have chance to, you can go to Zhongshan North Road. It's a very important road in Taipei. Okay, so we we can see this uh, very vividly in uh, Crystal Boys, Nits, uh, written by Bai Xianyong. And uh, in London, we are talking about uh, the distinction between West end and the west end and the east end. Okay, and where is the west end and east end? It's also a little, a small part of London, because we know that uh, in London the Thames River uh, ran across this part, right? And uh, the central part of London is the city of London. But this is uh, why why is it called city of London? Because this is the oldest part of London, uh, the Greater London, right? And uh, and uh, we have other parts that, uh, along with uh, the city of London, they constitute the west end of London. And you cross the city of London, you go to the east end of London. That is constituted by Hackney, uh, the southern part of Hackney and, uh, and the Tower Hamlet. Okay? So this, is, uh, this distinction is also uh, represented in many of the uh, famous works in the 19th century and the early 20th century. So, West London is uh, constituted by City of London, Camden, Westminster, Kensington, and uh, Hammersmith and Fulham. And the uh, East End is constituted by Tower Hamlet and the southern part of Hackney. Okay. So, the, the strong contrast between West and East London, or West End uh, and uh, East End of London, is uh, portrayed in the picture of Dorian Gray, written by uh, Oscar Wilde. This is a very, uh, very interesting work. I think if you have a chance, you should uh, read this book. Okay, you can see the distinction between 
West End and East End of London. And uh, there are several famous books set in the East End of London. For example, The People of Abyss by Jack London. Jack London is a very uh, famous uh, 19th century American writer. He tried, to, uh, he tried to move to London for a very short period of several months in 1902. And uh, he, he actually lived in the east end of London and he tried to blend himself within the working class people in London. So after he went back to America, he, he published The People of the Abyss. Okay, and you, you can know that uh, uh, this is uh, about, just from the title, you can know that this is, maybe this is about the miser miserable life of the people in the east end of London. And the second one is, is also very famous. It's the autobiographical novel written by George Orwell. George Orwell, uh, his uh, f more famous work uh, include uh, 1984 and uh, the uh, Animal Farm, right? But he also wrote uh, Down and Out in Paris and London. In this, uh, in, the, in, in the second part of 19th century and the first part of uh, uh, 20th century, many French and uh, British writers like to write about the distinction between France, France, uh, no, the distinction between Paris and London. What it's like to be living in Paris. This, mean, this means a more bohemian lifestyle, right? And uh, what it's like to, to be living in London at that time? Okay, maybe, maybe it's uh, more, more like an aristocratic life. Okay, and uh, in this novel, George Orwell wrote about uh, what it's like to be live in Paris and uh, London. And this London is the east end of London, not the whole London, it's the east end of London. And the third one is Journey Through a Small Planet by Emmanuel uh, Litvinov. Uh, Emmanuel Litvinov is a very famous Jewish, uh, Jewish writer. Uh, he, later on, he became, uh, became British. But he, actually, from, just from this, you can know that East End, in the first part of the of 20th century and the second part of the 19th century, East End are the, uh, the, 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 the place where many Indian and Chinese and Jewish people live. Okay? This is also an autobiographical work written by this British, British Jewish writer. So from this distinction within the city, we know that living in different places means different experiences, of course. And the people from different places might feel differently despite the fact they are living in the same city right now. Uh, the second part of this statement, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the nativist, the realist the writers in Taiwan, because the writers like uh, uh, Chen Yingzhen, Huang Chunming, Yang Qingzhu, they like to write about, they like to write about the lives of the uh, people. They are not originally from Taipei. They are from the southern part and the eastern part, or maybe from the suburban part of the of Taipei, of Taiwan and Taipei, and uh, they move into Taipei City and uh, their life changed forever, right? Okay, so this is uh, also a very important thing in uh, uh, nat nativist realist, uh, uh, realism. Okay, so what about urban space? Because we know that urban experience took place in urban space, of course. So urban space is far more than mere physical collection of places that like hotels, bus stations, museums, ho hospitals, and boulevards which are unique to the city. From my own perspective, it's a socialized space constituted by all kinds of interactions, which can perform commercial, political, culture, and even entertainment function. So what is important in this semester is we are trying to explore what happened in the urban fiction, right? And the in the works of urban fiction we are going to read in this semester, you have to understand the interactions between different characters. In, in, in one piece of world, you may see one, is one character is originally from Taipei, and the other is or originally from southern part of Taipei. They may have different, they may have different ideas about, uh, about uh, Taipei, right? And uh, 
that is the origin of their, their confrontation and conflicts. Okay, so this is uh, one thing very important in this semester. You have to understand, try to understand the interaction between the characters and uh, the the oppression of uh, social, uh, the social oppression, the political oppression on the people living in in Taipei or other cities. The other point that I want to stress is the, the urban fiction per se is not uh, the urban fiction we are going to talk about in this semester. Okay. Urban fiction or urban literature per se itself, uh, it means itself, in Taiwan emerged in the early 1980s after the econ economic boom of Taiwan in the 70s. You, 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 uh, this is about the histor historical background of Taiwan in the 1970s. I was born in the 1970s, and that is a very chaotic and a very, very, uh, very vivid period, historical period in Taiwan. Because during the 10 years, Taiwan was ejected from the UN. And Taiwan was, uh, uh, and uh, two very important international supporters of Taiwan, that is uh, Japan and uh, the United States, they, they, uh, they broke the official tie, official diplomatic tie with Taiwan. That is a very great setback at that time in Taiwan. But we also have the 10, uh, uh, we, we also have a very strong economic development at that time. And uh, many of the multinational companies corporations from Japan and from the United States, from other places in the world. They went, they went to Taiwan to invest a lot of money to establish factories. And that is the reason why Taiwanese people became rich in the first place, because they have a job which is a very different, uh, a kind of job which is very different from the, the previous job. That is uh, mostly agricultural. Uh, Okay, so this is uh, something very, uh, something very interesting in Taiwan. After uh, in in 1970s, Taiwan is politically chaotic but economically uh, vivid. Okay, and uh, we also see in this urban fiction two very important literary figures. One is Lin Yaode, he's a poet, uh, poet and a novelist. Lin Yaode and Huang Fan. They were largely re responsible for the earliest development of Taiwan's urban and postmodern fiction. And they were both advocates and uh, practitioners of this sub subgenre. Okay? But what, what we are going to talk about is not, this, uh, it's not just this uh, development. And you can see uh, what they talk about urban fiction from this article written by uh, Du Guoqing. He's a translator of uh, T.S. Eliot's Westland in Taiwan. And, but he's now teaching in uh, uh, UC California, uh, UC, uh, UC, UC Santa Barbara, okay? You can see the article written by Du Guoqing, Urban Literature and the Found Circle in Taiwan, okay? Okay, uh, but still we have to talk a little bit about Huang Fan first. Uh, Huang Fan's urban fiction usually brings our attention to the urban and the suburban worlds and the, how the development and the transformation of the city make an impact on people's way of life. For example, Huang Fan usually talks about the construction of roads, of highways, and this kind of construction is not only uh, something very uh, good for the people living in Taipei, they, may be, they, they might be something very bad for the people living in Taipei, right? And uh, for example, uh, not very long ago in Taipei, there's uh, some project of uh, urban renov renovation. And uh, there's, uh, there's uh, many people protest against this, this kind of project. And uh, so this, this, is not also, uh, this is not only about the development of a city. This is about the uh, value, different value held by different people. Because some people thought uh, maybe in the in the urban fiction, some people thought that uh, urban development is something good for them. But some people they choose they choose to live in a more traditional way, so they don't want that kind of uh, urban development. But uh, in most cases, we see this kind of urban development is unstoppable, right? So this has become a very serious problem. But 
In this semester, we will expand our scope of study and focus on fiction of urban experience in Taiwan, which is urban fiction in this broad, broader sense. Okay, so we are going to we are not going to limit ourselves to Taipei only. We are going to see uh, Lin Lin Haiying speaking and the Bai Xianyong's New York and Chicago <coughs> and even Yang Jingzhu's Kaohsiung. Okay, so. So we are not going to just we are not going to talk about only Taipei. We are going to talk about other related cities. This is the the first writer we are going to talk about this semester. Uh, Lin Haiying. Lin Haiying is a very uh, he he was a very special case in Taiwan's post-war fiction, because. She was. Uh, she, her father was from Miaoli County in Taiwan, in central part of Taiwan, but she was born in Osaka in Japan, and uh, not a very. Uh, I think it m might be uh, when when she was she, when she was five five years old, the family the whole family relocated from Osaka to Peking, so they they live in a completely different place in uh, in, uh, in 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 northern China. Right, and we are going to read two stories from this collection, Memories of Peking, Chen Nan Jiu Shi, and uh, that is uh, Hui An Hostel and uh, Lai Yi Niang. These two stories, uh, the thing, the main thing of these two stories, uh, what it's like to grow up in a place far away from your native homeland. I think one thing, the historical background of this, the, this story collection is very important, because. If you know a little bit about Peking, you know that it's quite different from Nanjing and uh, and uh, Shanghai, right? It's much much more traditional, especially in the earliest part of the 20th century. From the personal background of Lin Haiying, we know that uh, it, this is uh, something very important because, I, as I said, Lin Haiying was fine when the family relocated from Osaka to Peking, right? And uh, she was born in 1918, and when she was born, it's uh, 1923. So it's the, the 12th, 12th or 13th year of, uh, of the Republic of China, right? And uh, at that time, Peking was still ruled by, uh, by, by a lot of uh, warlords, not uh, ruled by KMT government, because at that time, the, uh, China is not still reunited by, uh, by uh, uh, the KMT's uh, military revolution, right? But at that time, we only see Lin, uh, we only see a Peking which is uh, not controlled by the KMT government. So it's more traditional than the southern part of Taiwan, and uh, you, we can see because it's more traditional. So many of the female characters in written in the story collection, they were uh, they were uh, they, they tend to be uh, constrained by these uh, traditional values. Okay, so so their life uh, become may, may maybe became uh, very miserable. Okay, so this is uh, what's uh, the point of these two stories. The second novelist that we are going to uh, discuss is uh, Bai Xianyong. Bai Xianyong is also a very special uh, writer in in the development of post-war Taiwan fiction. As I said, first of all, he's the one of the pioneers of uh, modernism in Taiwan. He introduced, he established the literature journal, Modern Literature, and introduced the, uh, the modernism in the West to Taiwan. And uh, what is more important is that Bai Xianyong, he, uh, his father is a very famous general in the KMT government, Bai Chongxi. And uh, that's the reason why he was able to go to the United States for further study. One of the reasons why that he can go to the United States for, for further study and uh, have the urban experience that, uh, like uh, no other uh, uh, Taiwanese writers. So he, uh, he graduated from NTU, uh, that's uh, Taiwan University, okay. and uh, maybe he, he went to <coughs> the United States in 1962 or 63. And, uh, Two years later, he wrote Death in Chicago and uh, Li Tong, a Chinese girl in New York. These two stories, they follow the formula or 
past and pre present, or past versus present, and uh, the both uh, both of the protagonists were students. What is the past versus present formula? This is about the first story collection read, uh, published by by Xianyong, Taipei People, because in in all this. Uh, in all these stories uh, included in this story collection, we can see the, the Taipei people in this story collection. They are actually, they are not Taipei people. They are from a lot of other places in mainland China. For example, uh, from Nanking, from Shanghai, from Guilin, from, uh, from, uh, from other places in, in China. And after 1949, they came, they came with the KMD government to Taiwan. And their life change forever. Okay, so their past is the their life uh, before 1949, and uh, their present is the life after 1949. Okay, so in that in Chicago we see uh, the student that is the graduate student in the the, the, the protagonist the protagonist in in this short story is. Uh, is a graduate student that is uh, the PhD student in uh, in uh, Chicago University, and he's he's about to graduate from Department of Comparative Literature, but he suffered from some kind of uh, loss of values, from some kind of uh, loss of traditional value, traditional Chinese value. Okay, so his past in Taiwan, and his present in America cannot. Uh, cannot merge together. He always tried to get back what has lost in his past. Okay, and uh, the second story, Li Tong, a Chinese girl in New York. This is a story about a girl from Shanghai. He, she's a, a very, she's a girl from a very rich family in Shanghai. And later on, after 1949, all of her families died in the in the uh, in the. In a shipwreck in on, on the sea, and uh, after that, her life changed. Her 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 uh, her <coughs> philosophy of life changed. Okay, so and this changed his her, her life in New York. Okay, so this is the the so-called formula of past and present. If you are interested in the uh, modern history of uh, RC, you can read Taipei People. And uh, you can have a vague idea of what's going on in the earliest part of uh, uh, of our scene. For example, if you read the uh, in if you read the story collection, the story New Year's Eve, Sui Chu, this story is about the 1938 Battle of Tai uh, This is a very famous. Is, this is a famous uh, battle in the in the Second Sino-Japanese War, and and it, in this in this war. Uh, the KMT uh, troops is uh, victorious, right? And the second story, the last night of Da of Da Ban Jin Da Ban, uh, Tai Ban Jin, uh, Da Ban is the hostess of a nightclub. Okay, and uh, this story is about uh, a main, uh, a female character Da Ban Jin. She's from Shanghai, and she used to be a very famous and rich uh, dancer. Of the nightclub, but after he after she went to Taipei, everything changed. Okay, but through uh, through the, through reading the story, we can see what's going on uh, of uh, in Shanghai during the 1930s. Okay, and uh, we also see uh, the dirge of Liang Fu, and this story is about the 1911 Xinhai Revolution, that is the, the establishment of uh, the RC. In in the story Winter Night, we, we see uh, the main fourth movement, and because the the main character of this uh, the main characters of this story are two professors in Taiwan and uh, the United States, and uh, they are the participants of the, this very important uh, movement in in China's history, the main fourth movement, and the. Last one is the state funeral, because we, we know that st what is state funeral? State funeral is the the funeral that uh, bestow on uh, generals or presidents only, right? And uh, so in this story, we are going to see 
uh, general, uh, the main character is a general, and uh, the, the, this story is written about his funeral. And uh, this story is written after Bai Xinyong's father died. Okay, so this, is, this story is uh, very autobiographical. And this story is about the northern expedition of uh, KMT uh, troops. And the, the Chinese Civil War and the 1949 Great Retreat to Taiwan. Okay. From week six to seven, we are going to read another work written by Bai Xinyong. That's uh, Crystal Boys. Uh, you have uh, a time span of two weeks to read this novel because this is this uh, this novel is uh, maybe two more than two hundred pages, and uh, but we are going to divide it in two parts. So maybe you you have to read uh, maybe a hundred pages. Uh, each time, okay? So this, this is a very important, uh, this is very important uh, novel in the development of uh, post-war Taiwan fiction. If you have read the, the cover of the English, the cover of the English version of this novel, you, you can see a, a slogan on the cover is uh, first Asian novel, right? Okay. So this novel is about the fate of a gay community in Taipei. So we can see a lot of uh, characters. Most of them are gay, are gay men. And uh, maybe there are some, uh, some people who, who help, them, uh, through, help them to get through the hardship in life. And uh, first, the gay men gather at the new park. The, uh, the new park is the old name for the 228 Memorial Park. It's uh, at the intersection of uh, Xiangyang Road and uh, Gongyuan Road uh, in Taipei. Uh, it's not very far from NTU Hospital. And, and uh, then later on, they relocated to a gay bar in the East District of Taipei after the park was shut down due to curf curfew. So, in the in the first uh, of the uh, in the in the first uh, book one and book two of the novel, you see this char these characters they like, gather in the East the West District of Taipei. And in the third, uh, book three and book four of this novel, you see these gay men they gather uh, in a gay bar in the east district of Taipei. So there's a very great, uh, very great distinction uh, between these two districts. Okay, so we say that by portrait of Taipei divided into two parts, and he tried to connect Taipei with Tokyo and the New York. So I think this is a very important thing. Because at that time we don't speak we don't speak about globalization that much, but after the the novel published uh, for uh, thirty years, we can we can uh, look back to the uh, process of globalization in this novel. After Bai Xinyong, we are going to talk about Chen Yingzhen. Chen Yingzhen is one of one of the uh, novelists that I admire the most, uh, but unfortunately he's, uh, he's in a very bad health condition right now. In, he, he, he's living in Beijing right now, but he's, uh, he has several strokes uh, uh, and uh, he's not very healthy right now. But anyway, uh, we're going to read two stories written by Chen Zhen. One is uh, One Day in the Life of a White Collar Worker. And the other is uh, night freight, and what is important about these two stories that uh, this is related to the life experience of Chen Yingzhen. Because so we know that uh, at uh, uh, in 1968, Chen Yingzhen was arrested by the KMT government uh, for reading Marxist uh, Marxism, uh, the works written by Marxist uh, Marx and uh, Lenin. Okay, and because during that time, it's forbidden. That is the time uh, that Taiwan still have the martial law, and uh, that is forbidden uh, for anyone to read that kind of book. Especially you are KMT, uh, you are KMT, you, you are related to KMT in any way. So Chen Zhen, he he's a uh, he's a left leftist intellectual. He he re he read uh, the writings written by uh, Marx and Lenin. So he was arrested and uh, imprisoned by the KMT government for seven years. <coughs> and uh, he was released uh, in 1975. And uh, 
because we have amnesty due to the death of uh, President Chiang Kai-shek. After he was released, he found that the, the Taipei he was living in is quite different from the Taipei he once, he once lived in. Okay. So he tried to figure out what happened during this period. So he wrote these two stories, Night Fred and uh, One Day in the Life of White Collar Worker. And in these two stories, the main characters in the stories, they were all from uh, the uh, southern, southern part of Taiwan. And they came to Taipei became, and they became workers, white collar workers in multinational corporations. And in these two stories, there is a, a multinational corporation from America. And uh, like I said, during the 1970s, uh, this kind of multinational co corporations, they came from many places of the world to, inve to invest a lot a large amount of money in Taiwan, and this changed the uh, the people living in Taipei. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Chen Zhen, the two stories, Night Fred and the One Day in the Life of White Collar Worker. And uh, the second nativist, the realist writer we are going to read is uh, Huang Chunming. Huang Chunming, this uh, these are the two stories. Uh, set during the uh, Vietnamese War period, uh, written by Huang Chunming. The first one is The Taste of Apples. The mm -hmm. second is Young Widow. I'm, we are not going to read the first one. We are going to just read uh, the second one, Young Widow, because it's a novella. It's uh, a, bit, uh, a bit longer than the short stories. And in these two stories, we see the influence of Vietnamese War on Taipei and its people. And what is more important is that in these two stories, the characters were from not from type, not original from Taipei. They are from other parts of Taiwan. For example, the, in the test, the test of apples, there's a family from the southern part of Taipei, uh, from uh, Taiwan. They came to Taipei to seek to seek a better life. To they want to make a better living, but in the end, they did not. They did not make a very good living. They they, they live in a very mis miserable living condition. But in the end, uh, the, the father of the family was uh, run down, was, was uh, run, run over by a car driven by an American colonel. And uh, this changed the life of the family. Okay? And uh, this is, this is uh, the, the taste of apples. But the second story, Young Widow, is uh, about. Uh, Young, young Widow is not really a widow, it's just a, the name of a bar, a, a, a bar for American soldiers. Because you know that during the Vietnamese War, the period of Vietnamese War, that is from the second part of the, that's from the second part of the 19, uh, 1960s to the first part of the 1970s, Taiwan became a place for American soldiers to rest, uh, to 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 take a break from their uh, from their combat. Okay, so many of the uh, many of the entertainment industry and bar industry prospered during that time. And in uh, at that period, there's a there's a bar named uh, in, I, I I mean in the in the story there's a bar named Young Widow, and uh, we can see the interaction between the bar girls and uh, the American soldiers and uh, the bar owners, how they train their bar girls. And uh, a lot of interesting things happen in the story. Okay? So this is uh, the story written by Huang Chunming that we are going to read in this, in this semester. After mm -hmm. the introduction of uh, Manison and uh, our na nativist realism, we can talk a little bit about the, the antagonism between Manism and uh, native realism, or the conflict between Manism and the native uh, realism. <laughs> I think this is very important because uh, the this kind of uh, in the in the later part of the 1970s, we have a debate on uh, native realism in Taiwan, and uh, there are two sides of the debate. One is the the camp of Manism, and the other is the camp of uh, uh, nativist realism. Okay, so modernism and the modern literature 
。Okay, basically, modern literature, uh, 现代文学 as a literary journal is established by, uh, four very important, uh, writers of modernism in Taiwan. One is Bai Xianyong, the other is Wang Wenxing, and uh, uh, Ouyang Zi and Chen Ruoxi. They are all graduate of NTU, the Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures. Okay, and uh, they are unsatisfied with the fifties. We know that the the romanticism of the fifties, especially the 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 uh, the anti-communist writings of the fifties, they tend to be too formulaic to to create for these young writers. So they want to initiate experiments in and the explorations and creations of new artistic forms and styles. So they borrow the elements from West. Western modernisms, okay, and uh, they are against uh, amateurism. Am what is amateurism? That is the uh, the background of the writers in the 1950s. Because, like I said, many of the writers from the 1950s in post-war Taiwan fiction, they are uh, they are soldiers, or teachers, or students. They are not well trained. They are uh, they are not well trained. They are not trained by uh, uh, by college, by universities, okay. So, what it, uh, and the the modernism writers they are trained by uh, college teachers, university teachers. Okay, so there's a great contrast between this, and the, they introduce. I mean, the modernist writers they introduce systematically the movements, trends, criticism, and souls of contemporary West Western arts and the literature, of course. For example, they introduced Franz Kafka, Thomas Mann, D. H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, and Fitzgerald Hemingway and Camus from from France. Okay, so these are the writers they introduced into Taiwan through translation, and they trans and they translate the works written by these writers and they publish it on modern literature. So if you are interested in the development of uh, the uh, of modernism in Taiwan, you have to read the uh, issues uh, of uh, modern literature, literature. Okay. So we can see a, a very clear distinction between modernism and the nativist, nativist realism. One is uh, westernized, because the modernist writers, they borrow the elements from Western modernism. So it, they are westernized. They, their way of life, their, their way of writing, their way of thinking tend to be westernized. And the nativist the realism, the writers, they, are, they tend to be localized. Well, how is that? I think this is also something very important because the writers, they try to, they try to uh, write stories based on the people, on the things, on the people in, uh, in Taiwan, on the things happen in Taiwan. That's, that is what, what I'm called, they are localized. For example, Yang Qingchu, this is one of the writers we are going to read this semester. He's a worker. He 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 did he did a lot of job before he became a writer. Okay, so he used his own life experience, his life experience in Taiwan, his life experience in Kaohsiung, his life experience uh, in engaging in political movements in Taiwan to write stories. Okay, so this is quite different from uh, from modernism, and. Uh, West uh, modernism in Taiwan is anti-tradition, like like we say, they 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 fight against all kinds of tradition, not only literary tradition. They fight against uh, uh, tra ethical tradition, something like that. For example, uh, there is a work written by Wang Wenxing, uh, Jia Bian. This work written by Wang Wenxing is a is a experimental is a very experimental work written by Wang Wenxing, and the thing is about the disappearance of father in the family, and this is something not uh, in the line with the traditional Chinese value because we know that in traditional Chinese value father is very important, and uh, Wang Wenxing intentionally let the father disappear in the beginning of the 
in, uh, of the novel. And uh, through the whole process of the novel, the son of the father tried to seek his father, but in the end, he seek in vain. Okay, so he did not, he did not find his father. And uh, nativist reason has a tendency of anti-hegemonic. What is that? They try to challenge the rule of uh, county government. That's uh, anti-hegemonic. And Manism has a tendency of uh, individualism. And uh, uh, nativist realism has the concern about the grassroots. Okay? Because uh, Manism, they are uh, westernized intellectuals. They care about their own self more than they care about other people, the people in Taiwan's society. And uh, in Manism, we see a lot of uh, innovations in forms and styles all kinds of uh, uh, experiments. For example, at that time, the te literary technique of a uh, string of consciousness were introduced in tai into Taiwan, because they introduced James Joyce into Taiwan, and many, uh, and Henry James, and the many Manist writers, they imitated this kind of uh, literary technique. But on the other hand, nativist, real uh, nativist realist writers, they do not did do this. They, they use the things about the lives of local Taiwanese people. They do not focus on, they do not uh, pay attention to uh, the, the use of uh, literary techniques. Okay? And the uh, modernist writers, they tend to be political disengaged. They, they do not try, they did not try to challenge the, the, uh, the, the government, the KMT government. And the uh, nativist realist writers, they they are politically engaged. So that's why both Chen Yingzhen and Yang Qingzhu they were in prison for, for, uh, for, uh, for so many years. Okay? And the, 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 last, the last point is the urban life versus uh, country life. Th this is somehow, uh, this somehow needs a, a little explanation. Because in the West, we see modernism focused on the urban life. Or the, 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 all the uh, works of fiction written by Western modernist writers, they focus on urban life, just like I said in last class. And uh, in nativist realism, we see, uh, we, we see in Taiwan, I mean in Taiwan, we see the writers, they wrote, they wrote about the life of uh, country people in Taiwan. But in urban fiction, we have to adjust this statement. In urban fiction, of course, they focus on the urban life, but they focus on different people in urban life. Like I said, modernism, uh, modernism and uh, uh, urban fiction written by Zhang Dachun and Huang Fan, they focus on the people who were originally from their city. And the uh, nativist realism, they focus on the people who were not uh, originally from the city, they were from the other parts of Taiwan. Okay, so that is the distinction between modernism and the nativist realism. Nativist realism in Taiwan is called Xiang Tu Xie Shi. Xiang Tu means uh, native soil, and uh, Xie Shi means realism. But like I said, it's not only a reflection of reality, but uh, also criticism of uh, problems in reality. In, of, of course, the problems in, uh, in the urban world. And the, the nativists, the, the, they are people from the countryside, usually tend to be exploited by oppressors like uh, government officials, businessmen, and uh, city people. Okay, so there's a distinction between good and evil, and naive and sophisticated. Okay, so you can see a lot of uh, use of uh, colloquial language in uh, nativist realism write, writing. And the, it proposed the local nationalism to replace the westernized elitist individualism of the 60s. And uh, that's also something very important because for the nativist realism, they don't want to write about the things happening in mainland China anymore. They want to write about things happening in Taiwan. So that's the whole point of this uh, nativist realism. So, but a position between modernism of the 60s and nativist realism in the 70s culminated in the debate of the Taiwan, Taiwan nativist literature from 1977 to 1978. That is the Taiwan Xiangtu Wenxue Lun Zhan. Okay. 
And the, the key figure in this debate is uh, Wang Tuo. He's a uh, very he he was very famous uh, writer of uh, the camp of uh, nativist realism, and uh, Chen Yingzhen. And the, on the other side, we have uh, Peng Ge. Peng Ge is a very famous anti-communist writer in Taiwan, and uh, also Zhu Xining. Zhu Xining is a more uh, complicated figure because he's trade on both the camp. Uh, one camp is. Uh, uh, the anti-communist writing and also modernist writing. And uh, uh, another very famous poet, Yu Guangzhong, uh, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a mainlander in Taiwan. And uh, Wang Tuo and uh, Yang Qingchu, uh, like uh, Chen Yingzhen, they were arrested and indicted in 1979 for their involvement with the Formosa incident, Meili Dao Shijian but did not silence the nativist realists. They, tried, they still try to publish a lot of works uh, based on the lives of local town people. In week 11, we're going to talk about Huang Fan. Huang Fan is a very interesting writer, because like I said, he combines the writing of uh, urban fiction and the postmodernism. And uh, like I said, postmodernism, the spirit of postmodernism is the death of the author, death of God, and the death of the truth, right? So in the, in the writing of Huang Fan, he always tried to hide the truth. He wanted to make the readers try to figure out what really happened in the stories. Okay. So it's, it's a, I think for me, reading Huang Fan is a lot of fun. You have to figure out what really happened in the story. And, you, and maybe we can discuss it uh, about the, uh, the truth of the story. And in the first story, A Rainy Night is a story about uh, a, a man wandered through the city in, in a rainy night. And uh, it's mainly about how, the way he complained about his life and his uh, marriage. And uh, we also see Tompu's Tree. Tompu's Tree is a, a story set in the suburban area of Taipei. And, uh, uh, and uh, also it's a story written from the perspective of a child like uh, uh, the stories written by Lin Haiying, because we know that Lin Haiying's uh, memories of Peking, the main characters, the main character and narrator of the story uh, is a little girl. And uh, in this uh, Tombu Street, we also see the urban world through the eyes of a, of a child who is an elementary school student. Okay? And these two, both of these two stories, they focus on urban transformation and social problems. The other one, uh, urban fiction writer we talk about is uh, Zhang Dachun. Uh, this is also a very famous writer and uh, radio sh talk show host, host in Taiwan. Okay? This, this semester we are going to read her, uh, his uh, Wild Child from the story collection, Wild Kids. And uh, this, actually this story collection is uh, uh, constituted by Wamei uh, these two stories, these two novels. And uh, in, uh, in, this t in this story, Wild Child, we, see, we also see Taipei City in the eyes of a group of high, high school dropouts. They are teenagers. So this is also a very interesting story. That is the first part of our semester. Because according to my own design, the first part of the semester is to, uh, to help you to figure out the connection and the, the, the uh, relationship between the development of uh, urban fiction in Taiwan and uh, the de development of a Taiwan fiction. Okay? I think you can see from the stories, you can see they are closely related. And this is the first part, a historical introduction to help you understand both the history of uh, Taiwan's post-war fiction and uh, urban fiction. And uh, the second part of the semester is, uh, is uh, a thematic uh, exploration of the urban fiction. First, I use five things to, uh, to deal with urban fiction. The first one is uh, marriage, and uh, there's also politics. There's also uh, mature villages, and there's also uh, consumption and some uh, and and uh, the first one we are going to see is uh, we are going to read uh, the city and the marriage and uh, the two stories are written by uh, one is uh, Liang and the other is uh, Zhu Tianxin and 
in these two stories, the first story is mainly deal with the problem of extramarital affairs. And uh, the second story deal with the, the way wives can be alienated from husbands. And uh, the first story is important because it represents the transformation of Taipei and Taiwan in the, uh, during the 1970s. From, uh, I mean, from the later 1960s to the early, uh, to, to the later part of the uh, 1960s. 1970s, okay, and uh, the tale of the kangaroo claim is, uh, uh, I think this is a very also a very interesting written by Zhu Tianxin. This is a story about women, they they uh, because in Taiwan and in the, in the more traditional Asian societies, their job of raising kids were bestowed upon women, uh, for most part, right. In this story, we are going to see how Zhu Tianxin portrayed this kind of traditional value and what kind of uh, social oppression were made or uh, were, were, uh, were made by this this kind of women. Okay, so this is the the interest, interesting point of this story is that the main character is not a, a, a group of people. In this story, it's a a type of people, not a group of people, a type of people. Usually we see stories are with a group of people, a, gr a, a group of uh, main characters. But in this story we see the main characters, they are a type of uh, people, a type of people, the type of people uh, that, that they are female and they are with, they are with children. Okay? So this is uh, also very interesting. Let's, the second thing we are going to explore is the city and labor, because we know that the labor the way of work, the, uh, the work life in the city is quite different from the work life in the country. The work life in the city is far more complicated than the work life in the country. Okay? So in, the cross, in Crossing Love River, we see the love between a tailor apprentice and a bar girl. And the, the story happened in Kaohsiung. And it's written by Yang Qingchu. In, in the second story, we see uh, a college grade, a, a college graduate, Han Sheng. And what is what is interesting is that the story is narrated through the mother of Han Sheng, the through the perspective of mother, the of mother of Han Sheng. And we see Han Sheng, he graduated from university and he tried to make a living in the urban world, but he failed because he did a lot of job, but he failed in the end. He, he was fired from his job a lot. So this, this, these two stories explore the problems of working in a big city. Okay. And the third thing is the city and politics. Uh, because in this, in this week, we see the story written by Huang Fan Lai Su. Lai, Lai Su is a story about the uh, opposition mm -hmm. movement in Taiwan, the political opposition movement in Taiwan. And the, the second one is 19 days of the new party. Of course, we know that there's in, the, in Taiwan's political demand, there is really a new party. The, the name of the party is new party. But this new party is, uh, uh, is, is a division. It's, it's, a, it's a division of the KMT camp. But in, in the title, of this new party is not a, really a new party. It's a, it's a DPP, uh, that's uh, Min Jin Dang, the, 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 uh, the opposition party in Taiwan. Okay? So this story, if you want to know a little bit about the, uh, the political setting of Taiwan in the, in the end of the 1980s, you, because we know that after 1987, the martial law of Taiwan was lifted, and uh, it created a lot of problems for Taiwan. And uh, that, is, that, is day, that, is, uh, that, that is the days when President Li Denghui was there rule Taiwan. Okay, so you can see a lot of political problems at that time. In week 16, we are going to read the uh, stories 
on the scene of uh, city and military villages. Military villages are very uh, interesting uh, urban phenomena in Taiwan. Because like I say, after 1949, more than one million people went to Taiwan with the KMT government, right? So you have to, uh, the, K the KMT government have to figure out the way to settle all these people. And uh, most of them were uh, soldiers and uh, soldiers, uh, soldiers with their families or they are teachers. And uh, so they have to find a way to settle this, all these people. And uh, so there's uh, the military villages in Taipei and many other cities in Taiwan. Okay, so and this type of uh, residence is quite, quite uh, isolated from the, the other part of Taiwan. So you can see a unique, unique lifestyle in this kind of uh, uh, residence. So we, we read two stories uh, which created uh, based on this kind, of, this kind of theme. One is uh, written by Zhang Dachun, LA116 Liaoning Street. This actually is an essay written by Zhang Dachun. And uh, the second one is The Vanishing Ball uh, by Zhang Qijiang. So if you, are, uh, if you are a baseball fan, I recommend, I, I strongly recommend you read this story and make a report on this story because this is a very excellent written story. Because uh, the story uh, uh, just opposes two timelines. One is present and the other is past. And uh, the present is the walking life of uh, uh, people, uh, of, uh, of a main character from Mitchell Village. And the other line is the past uh, of uh, uh, a game of baseball. Okay. It's a very exciting uh, story. Okay. So the story is portrayed the nostalgia for the lost military villages and the way of the life isolated from Taiwanese locals. It's very important. Because at, uh, uh, at the, in the beginning of the 1990s, there are many uh, major villages, they were ripped down and rebuilt. So the original way of life has changed by this kind of a reconstruction. So many of the writers at that time, they, they, they live, they, they, grow, they grew up in major villages. They tried to uh, write things to remember uh, the period of their growth grow up. And uh, the last week of this semester, we read uh, the story written by, uh, uh, by the sister Zhu Tianwen and Zhu Tianxin. They write two stories. They are very interesting. The first one is Find the Circular Splendor, Shiji uh, Mo This story is written on the theme of, uh, uh, of uh, the city and the fashion. Because we know that Zhu Tianwen is a very, a very, very acute observer of urban life, and he tried to connect the, the fashion, the way, the fashionable life, and uh, the city life, and uh, try to connect Taipei and other uh, city, for example, Tokyo, New York, London, through this kind of uh, fashion industry. And the second one is the breakfast at the Tiffany's. You, you know that this is the title. Actually, is the title uh, originally used by another American novelist, uh, Truman Capote, right? And uh, this is the one literary technique uh, usually used by Zhu Tianxin. In, in the story collection, The Old Capital, In this story collection, he writes about Taipei, but uh, he used three different stories, which are about uh, other city. One is, uh, of course, breakfast at the Tiffany's is about the city of New York, right? And uh, the old capital is written, I mean the original old capital uh, written by uh, uh, Yasunari Kawabata, he is written about to, uh, Kyoto. And uh, the third one is the Death in Venice, written by Thomas Mann. Okay, he used the th these three titles to try to connect uh, Taipei with these three cities. One is New York, the other 
uh, the other uh, Kyoto, and uh, the third is uh, Venice. Okay, so this is a way to talk about the connection between Taipei and other important cities in the world. Okay, and also the stories, the two stories portray the aspect of consumption in the modern city life. Okay, so that is uh, the uh, what we are going to read, the stories we are going to read in this in this semester. So, if there's no more questions, there uh, there will be all today. Okay.